Imagine what life on Mars might be like. Everyone has their own picture, right? But here's something that might not have crossed your mind. How exactly do we land on the red planet? If you're assuming it's anything like landing on Earth, prepare to be surprised. The truth is, the landing phase could change everything we know about space travel. Curious yet? Stay tuned! Every rocket engine and project SpaceX has been involved in for the past 20 years was leading up to Project Starship, SpaceX's reusable rocket and shuttle system. The first test flight was on April 20th, 2023, a year before SpaceX's first scheduled uncrewed mission to Mars. With the company making massive strides with the new Raptor 3 engine, Super Heavy rockets, and orbital launch pad technology, their proposed 2024 launch is looking more and more feasible. Rocket scientists the world over figured out how to escape the Earth's atmosphere in the late 60s, and the Apollo landings proved them right. Traveling and landing on Mars is another conversation entirely. So, let's look at what it would theoretically take to land an uncrewed flight on Mars. It's inherently more complicated than traveling on Earth, because our planet and every other planet orbit around the Sun because of its gravitational pull. The Earth moves at an orbital velocity of 30 kilometers per second because of its position in the gravity well the Sun generates. Mars is much further out than the Earth and moves much slower, at a 24 km per second velocity. When Starship flights finally break through the atmosphere to explore space, it will become another fast-moving object orbiting the Sun. If Starship were to slow down their orbital velocity, they'd get pulled deeper into gravity well before stabilizing in the orbit of Venus. Likewise, if they were to speed up, Moving faster than planet Earth, they'd rise in gravity well until they enter the orbital path of another planet, like Mars. In essence, interplanetary travel is all about changing your velocity relative to your starting point. It's called delta V. Delta for change, and V for velocity. Delta V is measured in the difference of orbital velocity between two objects, measured in kilometers per second. Yet, escaping the Earth's atmosphere is not as simple as achieving a speed of 1 km per second of delta V. Atmospheric pressure and gravity make the launch much more expensive fuel-wise. That is why SpaceX needed the Raptor rockets. Starship would need a speed differential, or delta V, of around 9.4 km per second to escape the Earth's atmosphere. Because of how much fuel and energy this requires, Starship will have to refuel in orbit before it begins the second leg of its difficult journey. They'll need about 9.5 kilometers per second of delta V to reach Mars's surface, which is about the same speed and power they require to escape the Earth's atmosphere. But even after they break through Earth's atmosphere, they still have gravity to contend with. The ship would have to accelerate 2.44 km per second to reach geostationary orbit, and another 0.68 to climb up to the moon's orbit. From this point, Starship only needs 0.9 km per second of velocity to begin its official journey to Mars. That should cost SpaceX 3.323 km per second of delta V. At this point, the Starship should be slingshotting across space. It should only take 0.39 meters per second of delta V to reach Mars. The problem is that the entire launch maneuver costs Starship half of its fuel, even after the refill in orbit. And that doesn't even address the speed differential orbital speeds between Earth and Mars. Mars is 6 kilometers per second slower than Earth. If Starship continues traveling as fast as it is, it will overshoot, miss Mars entirely, and end up somewhere in the asteroid belts beyond the planets unless Starship slows down. The astronauts piloting the Starship will have to attempt a daring maneuver by flipping over the craft and initiating a deceleration burn. 
They'll have to push the Raptor engines and shave off 0.34 kilometers per second of velocity to get pulled into the gravity well of Mars, near the outer rim of Deimos. Another 0.4 kilometers of Delta V will put the shuttle firmly in the inner rim of Phobos. Things get a whole lot more complicated from this point. Starships would need about 4.5 kilometers per second of V to touch down on the planet's surface but the trip so far should leave them with 1 or 2 kilometers per second of Delta V. Every choice moving forward from this point in the journey is purely speculative. While making a safe landing with that little fuel is theoretically possible, the crew must thread a very fine line. They'll have to rely on gravity and aerodynamic drag to make this happen. By burning some of their fuel, they can get into Mars's orbit but they should not maintain the usual circular orbit. An elliptical one is better. This differs from the usual pattern because it's shaped like an oval and has a low orbit spot called perigee and apogee, which is deeper into space. If the calculation and piloting are just right, Starship can dip low enough into Mars's atmosphere and experience some drag before being slingshotted around the elliptical orbit and circling back. If everything goes as planned, they should be able to bleed at a high speed and save enough Delta V to make a smooth touchdown on Mars's surface. This would mean transforming a drag dive into a full landing. But even that will be complicated. Mars is half the size of Earth and has a steeper angle of attack than the big blue ball because of its fragile atmosphere. It's so thin it's about 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. The starship would need incredible velocity, and be positioned at the right angle to penetrate the atmosphere, and ensure the spacecraft doesn't get bounced into space. Pulling off a landing would mean saving the last of the engine's Delta V until they're ready to touch down. That is why Starship will re-enter the atmosphere on its final entry upside down. The belly and tail will be pointed up, and the nose toward Mars. The lift generated by the maneuver should be enough to guarantee the steep entry angle. Aerodynamic drag also means it'll be bleeding a lot of its velocity. But to save even more energy, the Starship will have to transition into the traditional belly flop to bleed even more velocity and stabilize once it reaches Mars' terminal velocity. Thanks to its atmosphere, which is nearly five times more than the Earth's surface because of the planet's thin atmosphere, it will need more power to correct the flipping starship and execute a safe landing. If you've been paying attention, you probably guessed there's no margin of error on any of this. Any wrong calculation on the elliptical maneuver, angle of attack, or engine activation will consequently result in a failed launch. NASA accomplished all of its rover launches because they're considerably lighter than Starship. As you probably put together, fuel economy takes a massive nosedive with every extra pound of weight you add. SpaceX plans to make Starship's successor longer with Raptor 3 engines and lighter metals. Although the Raptor 3s are still in the final testing stage, we expect a marked improvement in Delta V from the Starship 2. In fact, if it goes well enough, Fuel will not be an issue. Although, we'd argue that starting a small outpost around the Deimos moon of Mars is a safer bet. Starships could refuel and have the Delta V they need to land on Mars. Still, we think a successful Mars landing and subsequent colonization is a decade off. Even in collaboration with the NASA Artemis project. The trip to Mars takes seven months. When you factor in the time, SpaceX will need to improve Starship hardware, analyze data, and gather resources. Each test will take over a year. There's also the small amount of uncertainty. Everything we know about the planet comes from scans taken by rovers. There are dozens of unforeseen hurdles they'll likely face. We've seen it before when SpaceX launched the first two flights. Mars will likely be no different. While Elon's dream of a colony of 1 million people is still a faraway dream, we're confident that SpaceX will be the company to lead humanity to the future of our civilization. Thanks for joining us for another episode of TechX. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest.
please comment below and share how we can improve these videos for you. And like always, see it here first.